Hey, uh, Blade Strangers Embargo is going to be up at midnight, so that is probably the video that I'll have up. Uh, the embargo is actually, I think, 12.01 a.m. my time, so uh, it'll go up at 12.30. Uh, I did actually seem to have injured my hand uh, yesterday, so I don't know exactly how much I can game. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, urgent care tomorrow, but it's not broken or anything. Anyway, uh, obviously I woke up today and there was some pretty damn big news, which is uh, Streets of Rage 4 was announced. Now, uh, what people are kind of not really realizing is that it's made by the Streets of Fury EX developers. Now, I know people, are, you know, they don't like the art style, they're skeptical about it, they're asking if Koshiro is involved. Uh, he basically made a tweet earlier today saying that he can't say anything about it, which probably means that he is involved. Uh, they're probably trying to, like, maybe stagger the announcement of him being involved to garner more press, but I'm not really sure if I agree with that. Uh, I think that they should have said it from the start because people, for the most part, uh, the, the reception for it has been pretty good. There's been a lot of people bitching about the art style and stuff, but I've realized how long I've been on the internet. I mean, I've been on the internet for like, <laughs> like about 24 years now, 20, 24, 23 years, is that you can't please everybody with an art style. Like, if they had went with really high quality like HD pixel art. I'm sure the game would have cost a lot more. I don't even think Sega is publishing it. I think that they just basically licensed out the IP, which given the developers, you know, Streets of Fury EX is one of the best modern beat-em-ups, you know, in years. <laughs> it's good that they are the ones doing the mechanics and gameplay and stuff. But you would have people bitching about, you know, it looking like every other, you know, indie retro revival 2D pixel art game. And I think that HD pixel art probably would have been the best option, but at the same time, you know, they would have had people complaining. <laughs> at the same time, you know, when you have, like, really good hand-drawn sprites, like the, what the guys at Lizard Cube are doing, I know that they did the Wonder Boy remake. I don't have a lot of experience with those games, but, you know, the reception for that was pretty good. They're also making another one soon. There's no way that they could really uh, accommodate everybody. I think that the, the gameplay, what, what little they showed, looks great. Uh, obviously... Uh, I was a beta tester on Streets of Fury EX. Uh, actually, the, the final update just came out yesterday. So if you're interested, if you have that game, if you want it from me from uh, past giveaways I've done, then you should definitely check it out. They did add some other uh, characters. Uh, I've seen some people bitching about uh, them having the Nostalgia Critic in there, which I think is sad. I don't know exactly what's going on with the drama with him, but basically uh, that update was done like early last year. <laughs> uh, I guess they just kind of didn't want to release it for a number of reasons. It's a shame, really. Uh, right now, Streets of Fury EX is on sale for $5. Uh, it is going to be on sale until the 3rd, so I think to celebrate this release, since I was kind of, you know, at least uh, minorly involved with Streets of Fury EX's development, or at least the beta testing, uh, I'm going to try to give out, like, two copies uh, people would be interested in. Uh, I'm very excited for the game. Uh, you know, I didn't have a Genesis growing up, uh, I had a lot of friends with, with uh, Genesis consoles. I had a friend who lived nearby who I went at the park. Uh, I lived across the street from the park, and I used to go over to his house all the time. Uh, him and his older brother, they had a Genesis. So I played, like, Golden Axe and Sonic and all that stuff over there, but I didn't have one. You know, most 80s to 90s kids, you know, unless you were a really rich kid, <laughs> you really only had Nintendo or Sega. Uh, unless you were lucky enough to have, like, an older brother or sister or even your parents who you know, were gamers or something. I think that was pretty rare back then. Uh, a lot of people didn't really get to experience both games. I think that Streets of Rage 3 is a, it's a pretty divisive game. Uh, you know, it did advance the, the genre quite a bit mechanically. You know, it had the the vertical dodges and the recharging special meter, which kind of made the Super Joys uh, a lot more useful. I'm interested to see uh, how they'll, uh, they'll manage this game. They haven't really said anything about the gameplay. Uh, obviously, it seems like it's kind of like a pseudo indie game. Like, it's not being published or funded by Sega, as far as I know. I think Lizard Cube and whoever else is involved in Guard Crush, they're all completely funding and endorsing the game. But, you know, I guess at the same time, they're kind of having a marketing schedule, kind of like what's happening with DMC5. You know, people have, uh, you know, a fuck ton of questions about that. Like, you know, how is Dante going to play? Is Virgil in it? You know, is there tag mode and, and all this other stuff, and they can't say anything because they have a strict marketing schedule. That seems to be uh, what they're doing with Streets of Rage 4. Uh, I don't know how far it is in development. Uh, the only inside information I had was that uh, I was in the Discord 
uh, about a year ago, actually, and that Discord was only for us, the beta testers, but uh, a couple weeks ago, they basically opened up that Discord to everybody since they want the, that Discord to encompass all the games they make, which is now Streets of Fury EX and Streets of Rage 4. They basically have been saying that, you know, this was the last update for Streets of Fury EX and that they're working on their next game, and we didn't know what that next game was. For all we know, it could have been like a mobile dating sim or something. <laughs> uh, obviously, it was not that. I don't know if I will be involved in the development. Uh, I would assume that they are going to be looking for testers who can, you know, actually play beat 'em ups, and that's kind of a, a rarity these days. I know that they're going to want to, this game to be the best it possibly can be because there hasn't been anything Streets of Rage related aside from ports and remasters for 24 years. Uh, Streets of Rage 3 was all the way back in 94, so like, I think it has pretty big shoes to fill. I mean, obviously, all the people who grew up with it are, are all my age now, you know, like very, very late 20s, early 30s. So I think that I'm not really sure who the demographic for it is. Like, that, that's a pretty hard uh, demographic to please because a lot of people my age just can't accept, you know, new sequels and new games. Like, they, you know, they, they want things to be exactly the same as the last one. You know, it's been happening a lot with the Final Fantasy VII remake. Now, obviously, that remake is it's vaporware at this point. You know, it's pretty much a joke in the in the gaming circles. But, you know, you, you see people complaining that they're, they're trying to change the combat, which doesn't make any sense. You know, the game, the original game has been available for over 20 years. And if you want to just play that game in HD, you know, the, there's been options and methods to do that for years as well. So... You know, I, I hope that people will give it a chance. I've already seen some negativity towards it. You know, people say that it looks like a Flash game and stuff. And I honestly think that's bullshit. Uh, if it had those sprites and they were skeleton animated, then yes, you could probably say that it would look more similar to something you would play on like Newgrounds or something. But they're hand-drawn sprites. I think it looks pretty good. I actually like how colorful it looks. We've had so many dark, grim, dark, depressing, you know, games lately. I think it's nice that it's going to have a lot of color. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, the color scheme on the Genesis was limited because the Genesis had a limited color scheme to begin with. <laughs> you know, obviously, that is not an issue now with uh, the, the advances in technology, blah, technology since the late 80s when the de Genesis was developed. I'm pretty excited for it. Uh, if I am able to get into the beta testing, I'm not sure if I'll be able to say anything. I mean, they're not even able to confirm or deny if uh, Koshiro is involved with it, or Kawashima. It'd be cool if both of them were involved, since, you know, Kawashima doesn't get as much love as uh, Koshiro does. But apparently on the press release, there's, like, no mention about the uh, the musicians at all. It just says TBA. And I don't really think that they would put something like that there unless they had something big planned. Now, Koshiro has made a lot of good music in other genres uh, lately. Like, if you've ever played the, the Wangan Midnight Maximum Tune games, uh, he's well known for putting out some pretty banging soundtracks for those. I used to love the soundtracks for the first three. I haven't played any of the latest ones, but he's been all over the place. Uh, I'm interested to see if he is involved, like what style of music are they going to go for. I think ideally they could probably go for something like The Messenger. Uh, the Messenger has both like NES and Genesis like FM synth chip tunes. So I'm curious to see what will happen. Uh, like I said, I don't really agree with how... They're marketing it. I'm not sure who's in charge of that, but I think that they should have just kind of quelled that fear and anxiety and the, the endless questions about whether he is involved right away instead of doing it later. I mean, you have only two of the characters announced. Obviously, the other ones are probably going to be in there in some capacity. There's actually uh, one more thing I wanted to show that's actually really interesting. Let me pull up my uh, source here. Hold on a minute. So you can see here, uh, I posted about this uh, pretty much right when it was announced. I think I woke up like 10 minutes after it got announced. So there was a lot of initial confusion about whether people were just trolling or it was like some some fan game or you know remake or just like a mock you know gif or something so i posted this earlier today i said streets of rage 4 by guard curse games is the best possible outcome check out streets of your ex on steam if you want to see what they're capable of these guys have made one of the best modern beat-em-ups with basically no resources so them having a publisher for this is insane 
and that posted, Above all, I'm curious how the game will play. I'd be down for this playing like Shoot Fury EX, but I'm sure the super hardcore fans wouldn't like that. The ideal solution would be having a normal mode and remix mode like Guardian Hero 360. Now you look at who liked this, we've got uh, good old Ace Nelson here, he's a good guy. We've got Getter7, he's, he's an excellent guy. <laughs> he's a lurker and a commenter on many, many indie uh, content creators. But then you have someone who worked on Shooter Fury EX. I actually, you know, worked with him. I gave feedback and beta testing for Shooter Fury EX. He liked this, this tweet, which means that, you know, maybe this is something that they will consider. Now, obviously, I, I think this game has big shoes to fill, and I've already seen a lot of, uh, a lot of unwarranted bitching and complaining about it. Everything from the art style to, you know, looking like Castle Crashers and not wanting it to be uh, combo heavy and stuff. I haven't really seen anybody saying that, but I'm sure it's out there somewhere. You know, people want it to be the exact same game. I think, honestly, you know, you know the kind of games that I like. Like, I, I played pretty much uh, Guardian Heroes 360 exclusively in remix mode because it was more fun and responsive and modern. I think the issue here is that by the time this comes out, like, Streets of Rage 3 is going to be, like, 25 years old. I think it's, it's important for them to shake things up and not just do the exact same game with, you know, a fresh, prettier coat of paint and... You know, hopefully the original musician. I think most people would be happy with that, but then you get a lot of people saying that it didn't advance the genre enough. And I'm not really sure how they're going to be able to please everybody, honestly. I'm definitely going to be uh, keeping tabs on this. Like I said, I didn't grow up with a Genesis, but I played all three Street of Rage games uh, a lot. I had a lot of friends growing up as a kid that had Genesis consoles, and this was those were the games I wanted to play the most. You know, I did play Sonic and stuff, but I. <laughs> Most of the time, I wanted to play co-op with them, and those are some of my uh, fondest memories back in the, that era. So I'm curious to see what will happen. Uh, if I am able to beta test it and I'll let you guys know, then uh, I'll definitely get that information out as soon as I can. There wasn't really any kind of NDA on the, the uh, Streets of Fury EX and stuff aside from just don't show the new characters, I'm sure. Obviously, this is a much bigger production, so I don't know what will happen. I hope that they you know, get uh, a lot of people who are very experienced in the genre to help with this. I think it's going to be important for them to have this looking good and playing good, you know, right out of the gate because people have uh, such high expectations for this, which is understandable. You know, you can have stuff like, you know, a Final Fantasy game, you know, or something is a flounder, then, you know, you know there's going to be a next one. You know, same thing with, like, stuff like Dynasty Warriors 9, you know, as much as people were toxic and negative towards that game, you know there's going to be another one. You know that they're going to learn from their mistakes and the, the genre and the franchise and the IP are going to move forward. But here, it's been such a long time, I think that uh, people are going to be really nitpicky, so I definitely have a good faith in them. I think that Streets of Fury EX is definitely one of the best, uh, you know, modern gaming experiences I've had, you know, getting to help help with the game's development and beta test it, and, you know, I got to run it at Californathon. I, I definitely had a great time with that game, and I'm, I'm definitely really happy that, uh, you know, they're getting their blessing to continue making good beat-em-ups and, you know, with an actual budget and artists. I always thought that that was the thing that held Streets of Fury EX back. You know, mechanically, it is a very solid game. You know, when it first came out, it was a bit stiff. It didn't have that many cancels and stuff, but myself and many other people gave them uh, feedback, and they pushed out that big free update with all the new characters and the, the guard canceling and plane canceling and the dash canceling and stuff, and that made the game really good. So I'm sure that they're going to take as much feedback as possible. Anyway, that's it. I just thought I'd let people know my two cents about this. Like I said, I don't have any kind of inside information or anything. The only thing I knew was that they were working on a new game for months, and they just kind of were basically saying that they couldn't really support Streets of Fury EX anymore because they're working on a new game. And now that we know that it's another beat-em-up, that's completely understandable. So uh, if I get any more information, I'll definitely let you guys know. Thanks for watching. Peace.